Welcome to the default Mac OS desktop. It's clean with only a few features to explain. At the top is the menu bar, at the bottom is the dock, and this middle area is the desktop. If you've used a computer recently, you're probably familiar with these areas, but I do want to point out a few things, especially as a Final Cut Pro editor, you're going to want to be familiar with your Mac. So the first thing is the desktop, it's going to show you any connected devices. Right now we have nothing connected to this iMac, so I don't see anything sitting here on the desktop. But if I were to connect an external hard drive, maybe that's where I'm going to store my Final Cut library, or other medias like a camera, you're going to see them on these, the desktop here. The menu bar at the top shows the current application we're in. Right now we're in the Finder, and it's going to be indicated by the bolded name next to the Apple menu. So if you open Final Cut Pro, you'll see Final Cut Pro at the top. And that's very important because the menus to the right of this, like File, Edit, View, and so on, those commands are for the app that you're currently in. So right now, if I were to go up to File and create a new folder, for example, it has nothing to do with Final Cut because it says Finder. So that's very important is you want to make sure to understand and know what app you're in when you're going to do these commands. So that's the menu bar at the top. Uh, left side here. The Apple menu is already always there for commands. Things like shutting down your computer or restarting are in, is uh, located in there. You'll also see the About This Mac section if you want to get info about something uh, on your computer you can do that and we'll go over those in a, in a different lesson. On the right side of the menu bar you may see many more options than what I have up here. I've kept this desktop and this, this account pretty clean but you are going to see at least the notification center, which is this little button on the right, and spotlight, which is the little magnifying glass. And spotlight's pretty important because it's like a global search for your computer. So you can use that to find things on your Mac. A lot of uh, editors use this to find movie files that they've either misplaced somewhere on the computer or even on an external drive. This spotlight search will search everything. And all you need to do to use it, just click on the spotlight, and you can start typing in what you're looking for. Next to that, I do have at Final Cut Pro help here. This is actually the name for this user account, and this is fast user switching. Now you may see other apps and other things running on the right side of this menu bar, and you don't necessarily need to worry about them, but if you do start to add and install many third-party apps that are not just built into the operating system, they're actually things you are um, installing, those could be using resources on your computer and slowing you down, especially when you get into Final Cut. So don't ignore everything that's on the top of the right side here of the menu bar. Um, just understand what icons you're seeing there because everything that's put on there is there's a very specific reason it's there. So if you see something on there that doesn't make sense, do a little research. Try to find out what it is. Otherwise, you can always send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com with a picture of the icons you see there, and I'll try to explain it and dig down to find out what that actually is. So that's menu bar at the top. We talked about the desktop, and then at the bottom you have the dock. And the dock is very simple. It just allows you to launch apps, and we can see a list of the applications down here. If you scrub across them, you'll see the name of those apps. And you're gonna always see the finder all the way to the left side of the dock. Um, for this course, the dock's always going to be positioned at the bottom. You can use system preferences to put it on the left side or the right side of your Mac, wherever you want. But for the purposes of this course, it's always going to be at the bottom. And the Finder is going to be always on the left side. And the Finder is what's used to search through your Mac. So when you want to find a file or you want to find an application, something that's saved on your computer or on a connected external hard drive, the Finder is used to search those and it's used to organize content. We're going to see this a lot when we get into Final Cut, where it's actually saving things. That's what the Finder is used for. So it's always open, it's always running, and we know it's open based on the little black dot that's below the icon. So if you see those, that little indicator down there, that informs us that that application is running. So as an example, if I were to click on Safari, which is the built-in web browser, I can click on that app to launch it. It bounces for a split second to let me know it's opening that app. 
And then notice the little black dot it put underneath of it. That informs me that that app is open and running. Uh, we can also see that it's the current app. If we go back up to the menu bar, it now says Safari up there. So all the menus to the right are indicating that we're using Safari. And again, this is all very basic Mac OS information as far as navigation. But if you're new to the Mac, th these are the little things that are, are very nice to understand about the computer and the way it works. And it will help you in the long run when you're working with um, Final Cut and other apps. And with the dock, another thing you can do, any of the open apps, really any of the apps you can do this with, if you click and hold on the app itself, you'll get a list of options above it. And this is where you can go to quit an app. Uh, you can also hide it. And depending on the app, you might have additional uh, controls here that you can actually go into. And under the options here, I'd like to point out that you do have an option that says keep in dock and open at login. So if you want to keep an app icon down at the bottom, say like Final Cut, we're going to be using that a whole bunch. We can say to keep it down in the dock and then it'll stay down on the dock. Or if you find an app is always launching every single time you turn on your computer and you go into it, it might be set to open at login. So if I click on that and then go back to the menu, notice under options we have a little check mark next to open at login. That means every time I turn on this computer, Safari is going to open and start to use resources from the computer. So if I don't want that, uh, or if you find an app is always launching, check under options and click on open at login to uncheck that. That way you don't have that running all the time. And then uh, the apps that are running, you can always go up to the app name if it shows up here and say quit Safari in this case or quit that app. Uh, but you can also use the dock at the bottom. So you can just click and hold on the, the icon and then say quit. It'll quit that app. We know it's closed because there's no little indicator below the app name. And then you have all your different apps listed here. If, if there is an app on the dock that you don't open frequently, Say I never use the Maps app, for example. I can just click and drag that above the dock. And notice it says Remove. I'll let go, and it removes it from the dock. I'm not deleting that app. I still can get back to it any time. I'm just removing the apps I'm not regularly using from the dock at the bottom to clean it up. Really, only the, the most frequent apps you should have listed on the dock there. If we go to the right of the dock, there's this little dividing line here, and this you can actually click and drag up or down to resize the dock. Uh, but this indicator is very important because to the left of it is all the apps that we've put on the dock, and to the right of it is folders. So we can actually see the downloads folder and the trash is down here. And you'll even get our recent apps section as you start to open up apps. So you can put other folders down at the bottom here. I can click on the finder, for example, and I'm going to do Shift Command H to go to my home folder. And let's say I wanted to put the movies folder down there because I'm using Final Cut a bunch. We're going to have some things saved in there. I'm going to drag this movies folder down to the right of that indicator and drop it onto the dock. And now I have a shortcut from the dock here. I can just click on movies and it shows me what's in that folder. Right now it's empty, so nothing's coming up. Same with downloads. But that's a quick way then to get to those folders. So that's a, an overview of the dock there. Anytime you put trash in the can, you'll see little papers there. Uh, but now that you've seen the dock, let's do a quick overview of Macintosh HD. So I'm going to click on the Finder here, and we're actually going to start to navigate around our Mac. So to do the navigation, I recommend starting at the computer level. And here's what I mean by that. You can go up to the Go menu and quickly jump to different areas of your computer. In this case, we're going to jump up to the computer itself. And you can use the shortcut Shift-Command-C. This is one I recommend learning because anytime you open up a Finder window like this, you can just do Shift-Command-C to go to the computer level. And what this is showing me is everything this Mac currently sees. So it sees Macintosh HD, which is the computer's internal storage drive or hard drive. We see the network. So this would be any computers that are connected to this computer via the network. So if you have other ones on your Wi-Fi network, for example, you can actually connect to them through this. And there's an option for remote disk. We're not going to use that in this course, but if you had a DVD player or DVD burner on another Mac, you can actually get access to it using remote disk. But in our case, we're going to use Macintosh HD. We're going, to, we're going to do an overview of this hard drive 
and it's it's very important to understand this hard drive. So before we do that, this Finder window is a, a little plain, so I want to turn on some things, and I recommend you do this on your machine as well. If you go up to the View menu, there's an option to show the path bar. And I really like this path bar. What it does is it puts the path bar at the bottom here. So as an example, if I click on the desktop, notice the path at the bottom shows me the desktop, shows me my user's home folder, the user's folder in Macintosh HD. It's essentially showing me a path from whatever folder or file I have selected. It's showing me the path all the way to the top which the top for in, in our example here is Macintosh HD. So if I do Shift Command C, here we are back at the top level of my iMac, my computer here. Uh, we can use the Finder to view these files in different ways. So we're viewing them as icons right now. I could change this to a list view, which shows additional information with these, with these uh, columns here. Uh, and I can click on any of these, these uh, columns to sort based on that column. Uh, or I can use column view, which is this third one over, and this allows us to navigate between the different levels of the hard drive. So we're actually going to do that here. So again, Macintosh HD is the top. When you click on Macintosh HD, you should see four items. Some people see more based on the files they've saved there, but the important ones to point out here is applications. This is where all of the apps you've installed on your Mac are going to be located including things like Final Cut and, and other apps. If I click on this, you can see a whole bunch of random things that have been installed on this Mac. Yours will most certainly not look like this. If you haven't installed the Adobe Creative Suite, for example, you're not going to see things like After Effects or the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, but you should definitely see things like the App Store uh, will be there. If you've installed Final Cut Pro, when you scroll through this, you're going to see Final Cut Pro listed. Uh, as we work more through this course, you're going to see reasons that I've installed other apps on here, and you might want to install the same ones on your Mac. But this is where you can go to find them. Uh, if we have Final Cut, for example, we want to put that on the dock, I can click and drag that down onto the dock, drop it, and now it's added a shortcut to open that app. Uh, the next folder I recommend going into is your Users folder. And under Users, you're going to see all the users' accounts on this Mac. If you have only one account, maybe you just set up the Mac, you will just see the one home folder and the shared folder. The home folder and the account you're currently logged into will actually have a little home indicator, a little home icon there. And when you click on that account, you're going to see hopefully these items. Desktop, Documents, Downloads, Movies, Music, Pictures, and a public folder. This should be everything that's stored in this column here. Because if there's files that you're saving onto your computer, I either recommend saving them on the desktop if they're temporary. You can use the Documents folder to store anything you'd like. And then Downloads is where things that you download from the internet are going to go into temporarily. Ideally, you're going to sort those files into either Desktop Documents uh, or one of these other folders. When we work with Final Cut Pro, Many of the Final Cut Pro libraries are going to be stored in the Movies folder. And that's where I recommend storing those libraries until you get external drives and maybe move them off to other places. But again, if you save something directly inside of your Final Cut Pro Help, your home folder, that's going to go into this column here, and that's not organized. So I do recommend storing things one level deeper, either inside of uh, desktop, Documents, Downloads, one of these folders here. And then going back up, I do want to call out these other two folders. We have Library and System. And you should understand why these folders are here and understand why it's important to stay out of them. Many people start going in here and they go into Library, for example, they see a ton of different folders, and then they start to go in and navigate inside these folders. So the one warning I give, if you don't understand why the library is there, it's probably a good thing to stay out of it. Same thing, if we go into system, we have a library folder. And it's this same warning. Like if it says library, it tends to be pretty important. Just like with Final Cut Pro, we're going to have a Final Cut Pro library, and that actually stores everything. It's a very important folder. And these ones for your Macintosh HD, for your Mac OS, your, your whole computer, 
these library folders are here to make them run. So if you start going in here and deleting things, maybe you're reading a blog post somewhere online and it says go into this folder and delete this and it'll fix all your problems. Well, it, it may, but it also might cause so many more problems. So uh, my warning and recommendation is unless you're being uh, very deliberately directed to go into these library folders or you understand the consequences of what you're doing in the library folders, it's a good idea to stay out of them. So that's uh, kind of a quick overview of your hard drive and everything that's saved on the hard drive there, and that's how you can navigate between them. Again, with any of these folders, you might do a search for something and get put somewhere. If you've enabled that path bar at the bottom, you can then look at this path and understand where you're located. As an example, sometimes you do a search for something and it'll send you to a very specific folder to say, hey, here's some content that we're working with and you see some asset and you don't know how you got here, you can just look down here at the path bar and we can see exactly the path of where this specific file is saved. And looking at this one, I can go back and say, oh, this is inside of Macintosh HD in the library. And I, I know that anytime we go into the library, we wanna be very careful with these items. So in this case, I wouldn't just randomly start deleting things uh, because of it, that path being the library. So um, that's a quick overview of Macintosh HD and what's saved in it. The next thing I want to point over, just again, another very basic skill, is you can go up to the menu bar, and we can see right now we're in the Finder. We have an option to go into the Finder Preferences, and whatever app name is here, it can say Final Cut Pro or Safari, whatever app you're in, when you click on Preferences, these are preferences specific to that, that one app. So when you're in Final Cut Pro preferences, you're going to see very different options compared to the Finder preferences. And I point that out because you can also go up to the Apple menu and go into System Preferences. And the System Preferences are system-wide. So these tend to be a lot more important to the way that your system works and will affect the way the Final Cut uh, handles different items, things like the way your mouse is, for example, how fast your mouse can track is controlled in here. Uh, the system preferences is a great place to go to check out the settings for your computer. And I would recommend going through here and looking at a couple of these. Uh, if you have questions about how these work, when you go into a system preference pane, the lower right corner, there's a little question mark. You can actually click on that to bring up the user guide for that specific preference pane. And notice, for example, appearance. This version of macOS includes a dark mode and a light mode. We can actually see a description of that here. So if you have any questions about these, look for those question marks. They are very helpful in explaining what's in system preferences. And I would recommend going through those because you won't know what you can change about your Mac unless you look at those preferences. So definitely go in and do that. And just to summarize this video, we took you through a tour of Mac OS, showing you the menu bar, the desktop, and the dock. And we also played around a little bit with the Finder, using it to navigate your hard drive, looking at Macintosh HD, the folders like applications and users. We've also seen libraries, a good kind of keyword to look out for and to stay out of those things. And then at the end, we looked at system preferences and compared that to your application preferences and how to get access to those. In the next video, we're going to look at actually purchasing and installing Final Cut Pro 10 and how you can do that if you don't already have that installed on your Mac.